Now I'd like to invite uh, the next speaker, uh, that is uh, Professor Bulka. So, um, first of all, I would like to my sincere thanks and gratitude to all great masters, great practitioners assembled here, and also the all members of the organizing committee of this uh, brilliant conference on Tripitaka, International Seminar Tripitaka in Delhi, in Badagaya. I am come from Mongolia. Came from Mongolia, a Mongolian Buddhist. Uh, as you know, the also I pay homage to all of you on behalf of Mongolian Buddhists and Mongolian uh, believers to all of Mongolian masters assembled here. Thank you. So um, my presentation uh, focus, focused on also in, in dep uh, dependent origination, mainly in in the Mongolian sutras, Mongolian uh, Buddhist works made by Mongolian scholars. So today we are very happy to share with, with you uh, the very deep topic of Buddhist philosophy, uh, namely the dependent origination and the Origination and, uh, sorry, Samotpatya, Samotpat, Samotpatya, Demre, what is, yeah, what is Samotpatya? You, you know, the, I uh, bring, uh, best of all, I bring information, introduction about the Mongolian Buddhism. Mongolian Buddhism, uh, uh, but, uh, Mongolians accept Buddhism three times in historical backgrounds. Uh, ancient time and middle time and the late time, late periods. Ancient time we brought, you know the Mongolians is nomadic people who moving, uh, uh, moving uh, step, step sides and uh, anyway. And sometimes we, uh, Mong ancient Mongolian lives bordered with Himalayan regions so at that time, uh, Mongolians brought uh, Buddhism uh, direct Indian, Indians, Indian Panditas, Indian uh, doctrines. It said, it said the historical backgrounds. And middle way, in the middle period, we uh, brought uh, Buddhism in some, during, during the Mongolian kings, great kings, like Chinggis Khan, Kublai Khan. The king, Mongolian kings connected with uh, some, connected with uh, some sects of Buddhist, Tibetan Buddhism. Tibetan Buddhist, Sakya sects, Kaju sects, uh, Karmapa sect, sect leaders, they have some contacts, uh, Dharma contacts, Dharma teachings. This, uh, some um, Tibetan uh, scholars given uh, uh, Mongolian kings and son of kings, they have teachings, uh, some uh, uh, oh, in, uh, some of, I'm, I'm sorry, empowerment, empowerment, etc. Like this way. And late, uh, from the um, 16th century, we, mo we mainly accepted the Gilekwa tradition. Gilekwa tradition uh, tradition mainly uh, ado uh, adopted uh, by uh, by teaching by teaching through teaching of Zonkawa Zonkawa Rinpoche. So that's like this way we uh, trace the way of Buddhism into Mo into Mongolian among the Mongolian believers and the Mongolian uh, sh scholars. So among them, the most revered 
most revered, most uh, uh, Madhyamic philosophy is the most revered philosophy of Mongolian Buddhist scholars and believers. Mongolian thinkers launched a great deal of activities to complete the reference books and textbooks, making commentaries on the large number of Sutra, Shastra, which had been composed by great thinker Nagarjuna, father of Madhyamika, and other eminent scholars of India who, who promoted Madhyamika development, and as well as works by Jizunkawa, his disciples, followers, followers who developed Madhyamika philosophy in Asia, Central Asia. We, uh, it's indeed uh, Mongolian Madhyamaka thinkers have studied subtle matters of Madhyamaka, Madhyamaka dialectics from its different aspects. According to our research works, dialectical meaning of the Madhyamaka philosophy lies in the fo following. following. Firstly, Madhyamaka thinkers regard the roots of all existing are is a shunyata emptiness, attributes, quality, and they have reached absolute, tr absolute through the profound abstractions forms, concrete forms, relations of things and phenomena. Secondly, it did not let the abstract to be the separate, separate entity, but emptiness from Dhammakaya, Nirvana, Nirvana, and Samsara are considered, considered by them the unity. In consequence, they could shift from the abstract to the concrete. Thirdly, they have consi consistently stand against metaphysical way of thinking, one-sided doctrine, examining the universe, universe in the interdependence, independent origination. They achieved epistemological grasping as things really are. Mongolian thinkers are developing and deepening these, these ideas. This regard, Parasangika idea, one of the two sects of Madhyamaka philosophy, is the akim of human mind as a real thing of pure and the profound meaningless. Meaningless. Basically, Mongolians revered Buddhism is not worship only. Worship only is a matter of fact. Is teaching of the land Buddha is not supernatural or omnipotent things. These are no omnipotence or almighty God in Buddhism. In Indian great thinker Buddha Shakyamuni created in effect doctrine on human beings and being, being himself humanist, preached the basic tenets on how to liberate human beings from the suffering. This principle aim, be, uh, uh, principle aim he pursued was to, pe to perfect and purify the, uh, purify the mind First of all, in the inner world of man, in rich world of his wisdom, because the cause of suffering is not external world, but in man himself. himself. Mongolian uh, thinkers have followed this idea. So I shot my uh, presentation because my presentation already published here, published the books you, if you want to have. So enjoy this activity if you want. And I make uh, uh, one verse outline how the Mongolian practitioners, scholars uh, meditate, practice it, this uh, thought. One example, for, for example, hereby. Uh, I take refuge in the middle view with deep respect which is the craft to cross ocean of cyclic existence, which is the door to enter the city of Nirvana, city of Nirvana, and which is the excellent path to the transcend the extremes. It's just one verse about, about the Madhyamaka thought, including the middle way, Samadpadiya. Thought. One Mongolian thinker explained, explained like this way, like this way. Uh, you understand it very well. It means that Madhyamaka is philosophy of middle view, 
avoid them extremists and ex uh, two extremists, nihilism and eternalism, which, which means that the, uh, about the truth, philosophical truth, conventional and ultimate truth, ultimate truth. And the, uh, and the middle way philosophy contradict normal conceptions. We need courage to engage in honest and rigorous investigation of reality that advocates and integrate far reaching of what is discovered into our lives, our lives. The quest for this understanding involves us in inquiry, determine the criteria for existence and investigation of how we perceive reality. And also one example, another example, to understand the middle way is very, it, it, it's not easy, so that's why some, in some cases, uh, they compare, compare with other uh, things, like, um, like making analysis the Nagarjuna and some Aryandeva and some scholars uh, make analysis, some things like chariot analysis, chariot analysis. Likewise, the Mongolian one thinker also made uh, an analysis on the house, Mongolian house, Mongolian gear, Mongolian tent, I mean, Mongolian tent. Mongolian tent also consists of many parts many parts, upper part, the uh, down part, and the middle part, etc. Like this way. Gear is identical with its parts. Gear is different from its parts. The gear is, depends upon its parts. Gear is parts, uh, depends upon gear, gear's parts. And gear pos possess it, its parts. Gear is Configuration of, configuration of parts. The gear is conglomer, uh, conglomeration of parts, like, like, sorry, like this way. They make some small analysis to understand Mongolians, uh, uh, Mongolian habits. Yes, they will, will live, nomadic people will live in gear, like this way. So, <clears throat> Buddha, but what Buddha thought that ignorance is the root cause of our suffering, problems, difficulties of all cyclic existence in his sutras, mainly in perfection wisdom sutras. This ignorance is not merely lack of understanding, but mis misconception of how things exist and the most importantly of how is the self exists. Although the self is merely attributed to the combination of body and mind, our misconception fabricates a self which is an execration of what actually exists. We cling to this and seek the kind of friends, possessions, surroundings that we imagine will ensure the happiness fabricates self. Anything that acts an obstacle becomes a source of frustration. We suffer because we are bound by desire, anger, and the experience of effect of actions. We perform under the influence of these turbulent emotions. We fail to find peace, success, and security. We seek and instead encounter difficult disappointments this pattern keeps repeating, but through the correct understanding reality, we can eventually gain freedom from this suffering by writing ourselves of the misconception which lies as its basis. Mahayana point of view is that, is that nothing, what you has through our independent existence has extremely optimistic dimension. The disturbing attitudes, emotions, which at present dominate our mind and behavior are entirely dependent on causes and conditions of which eternal are most influential. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor uh, Venerable.
Bangal, and uh, uh, Venerable Bangal has started to explain briefly about the, uh, the, the history of Buddhism in the Mongolia. He explained there are three. There were three phases. The first, in the first phase, uh, uh, Mongolia got Buddhism directly from the contact with the Indian masters, pandits. In the second phase, you know, the uh, Mongolia had Buddhism through the uh, the earlier part of the Tibetan Buddhism, particularly Satyapa and Kajupa. And the third phase, uh, the Buddhism came to Mongolia, is uh, through the uh, Jesongkhaba's traditions, and that's how he explained uh, the brief history of Mongolia, uh, Buddhism in Mongolia. And also he had explained briefly about the, the main philosophical view in the Mongolian Buddhism is the within the Sanskrit tradition. You know, as you know, in Sanskrit tradition, there are two philosophical schools, mind-only school and the middle way school. And here in the, um, in the Mongolian Buddhist tradition is the latter one, that is the Madhyamika. Within the Madhyamika philosophical school, Madhyamika Pasankika, or the uh, consequential Madhyamika school, uh, such as the Chantakirti uh, and so forth, the version of Madhyamika uh, philosoph uh, philosophy. And also he explained <coughs> briefly about you know, the nature of the Buddhism uh, you know, the Buddhist practice is not just mere, you know, uh, performing some, kind, some form of rituals. It is more than that. It has more detailed, sophisticated, philosophical interpretation, explanation, and uh, based on those philosophy, have a very profound, you know, the uh, practices. Also, he briefly explained, we, you know, we all know the the source or the sources of our, uh, you know, the, what you call the sufferings of the dukkha is not outside. The main sources of the suffering are within ourselves. Therefore, we should find out the solution within ourselves, not very much from the outside, because the origin of the dukkha is within ourselves. And also he explained very nicely one of the Mongolian masters writing and uh, that master's writing about the, you know, the, uh, the view of emptiness and uh, dependent origination. Also, he nicely explained one of the Mongolian masters used the analogies, local analogy, to like the, you know, in India, like Nagarjuna and some of those great Indian masters uh, explained the chariot as a how chariot is coming into existence. Chariot come into existence dependent on many parts of the chariot, like the wheel, axle, and, and so on and so forth. And uh, this great Mongolian master, instead of using the chariot as an example to show the dependent, uh, dependent origination or dependent arising, that this Mongolian master used, uh, many of you may know, you know, the Mongolian tent, it is called yacht, has, a very, has a many different parts to put together as a yacht and comfortably people sit within in that. And that master used that uh, uh, to explain the how things and events are coming to being and are coming to existence through the dependent origination. Uh, so th there's a great, great, nice explanation. And I would like to say thank you for Professor. Thank you.